Hello ladies and gentlemen again. This is Dr. Robinson and we are reviewing from the New York State Mathematics Grade 7 exam and this is our show number two and we're taking examples from the 2016 released exam. So if you need help with your homework, there's Dial and Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380. That's from Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays. On, it's on at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision Channel 15. Check out our videos on YouTube. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Let's take a look at our latest release, PKMS, Math Prep 17. It's a very good movie. I think you'll enjoy it and have a little math fun, too. You can tweet me at DRobin. Drob Math One. All right, so let's get started. So line K N represents a proportional relationship. Point N lies at eighteen twelve, as shown on the graph below. So I see there's point N right there, but I don't see a line. So which ordered pair could represent the coordinate of point K? So we're going to need a line. That's the first thing I would do. Let's get a line, so let's make this red line. And we know if it's a proportional relationship, it starts and goes through the origin. So I'm going to go through the origin. Okay. So there is our point. I mean, there is our line. Let me just take a look at point N. So let me put, put this line in to the back. Let me undo that. So let me draw a dot. All right, 18, 12, which is right here. Okay. Now, we know that it's a proportional relationship. Since it's a proportional relationship, that means it starts at the origin, but we have a constant number that represents a y over x relationship of the coordinates where y which is the second part of our coordinate and our coordinate name is x y and x is the first part of our coordinate name is equal to some constant so if we take each one of these points, and I'm going to do it a quick way. I'm going to graph them. 6, 0. 6, 0 would be right about there. That's not on the line. 2, 3. 2, 3 would be about there. That's not on the line. 1.50, which is halfway. That's not on the line. Close to it, though. But we have 7.5, which is here, 5. And that's in the middle of there. So if I can go up a little bit, that's right about there. And that one gets could get part of that line there. So that one looks closer. I have two that are really close. So the only way to tell is by taking the y-coordinate of this point, which is 12, so let's get point N, and I'm going to put the Y coordinate, which is 12, and over 18. When I simplify that, so I'm going to reduce it down to its lowest term, so I can divide both of these by 6, and that'll give me 2 thirds. So my constants of proportionality would be two-thirds. So that's what the value that I have to look for out of all of these points. So if I take this point A and make it 0 over 6, because 0 is my y coordinate, 6 is my x coordinate, 0 over 6, that does not equal two-thirds. So A is no good. Let's try this one. This one looks good, but 
this is my y coordinate and that'll be 3 over my x coordinate which is 2 that's not equal to 2 thirds that's upside down it's a reciprocal so that's not it so B is gone let's look at C here again is my y coordinate 0 over 1.5 is that equal to 2 thirds I don't think so so that's not it so C is not it so it's got to be D alright let's try 5 over 7.5 Now I don't like decimals in my denominator or with anywhere within my fraction so I'm gonna multiply out by 10 to remove the decimal that'll make that equal to 50 over 75 now 50 over 75 50 and I'll write that up here 50 over 75 I can that equal to two-thirds well the way I can tell I can cross multiply and see if they equal so let's cross multiply 5 50 times 3 that equals to 150 and 75 times 2 hey guess what that also equals to 150 so I am definitely convinced that it is D now in graphing it it did look like it was close to it but now I'm definitely sure by doing my proportional relationship and checking my cross product so D is the one I picked and that is right so check it out see what we did and hopefully you'll get it right too so remember when you're dealing with a proportional relationship it must go through the origin and if it goes through the origin later on you'll learn a formula which is similar to this in eighth grade where you have the difference between y coordinates over the difference between the x coordinates will give you your slope and we call it a constant of proportionality and I wish I could do that for you but that's eighth grade so uh, you just stick with y over x wallpaper was applied to one rectangular wall of a large room the dimensions of the wall are shown below so there's the wall 42 feet by 25 by 25.5 feet so there's your wall if the total cost of wallpaper was seven hundred seventy one dollars and twelve cents what was the cost in dollars of wallpaper per square foot so we want to know what is it per square foot so let's take a second get our cal okay I got my calculator so let's first of all look about this wall so we're interested in the per square footage of the wall so we have a wall that is 42 feet by 25.5 feet so the first thing we better find out is how many little square feet do we need in this wall so these little boxes are square feet and I have a total of 42 going this way and I got a total of 25 and a half going down this way so I need to find out what is this total area and if you remember the area formula for a rectangle is length times width so I'm gonna to have to multiply 42 by 25.5 that'll give me the square footage that I'll need so let me get my calculator real quick and multiply it so let me move, let me multiply, move that over there 42 times 25.5 and this will give me the actual square footage that I need oh it doesn't come out to a decimal so I need 1071 square feet so that's how many feet that I need so now let's take a look at what they said they said when you paid for the wallpaper it was a total of seven hundred seventy one dollars and twelve cents what was the cost in dollars of the wallpaper per square foot so you actually paid some amount of money for 
seven for a thousand seventy one you paid some amount of money uh, per square foot so you need a total of ten hundred seventy one square footage you paid already seven hundred and seventy one dollars and twelve cents that's what you paid so the question is how many square footage would you need if you paid this much and you need that much so let's see what I am inclined to do I think I will divide so I want to find out how many square footage how much would it cost what dollars would it cost times the amount of these square footages or footage uh, square feet that I would use for seventy one dollars and twelve cents so I would divide both sides by ten seventy one which will give me the amount of dollars per square footage so I need my calculator again so let me get my calculator up. So I have my answer there. So let's clear that out of there. So I spent $771.12. And I need to divide that by 1,071 square feet. This will give me the amount per square foot. So it's going to cost me for one foot, one square foot, 72 cents. And I can even check that if I uh, multiply uh, 72 cents for one square foot and I need a total of, the, of 1,071. Uh, that should come up to that amount. So let me just clear this out. Uh, 72 cents times 1,071 square feet that I need. If I multiply that out, that should give me 700. Yes, it does. 771 dollars and 12 cents. So it does check out that I need uh, that they're going to cost me 72 cents per square foot. So my answer is 72 cents per square foot. And let's press this box and see what we got. So we found the area, time, which is length times width of the rectangular wall. And once we found that, we divided the price by the number of amount of square feet that we need, which came down to 72 cents per square foot. That was a good question. So I hope you understand what's going on. If you're not sure, watch the tape again. Bring your questions in tomorrow, and we'll be glad to answer them in class. Here's our last question, and we'll stop here. The lines graph below show the amount of water in two tanks as they were being filled over a time. Each tank explain, for each tank, explain whether or not there is a proportional relationship between the amount of water in gallons and in the time in minutes. If there is a proportional relationship, identify the unit rate, good word, specify Use, I'm sorry, use specific features of the graph to support your answer. So here we got two tanks filling up. And let's scroll down a little bit so we can see the other tank. Let's see what's happening here. All right, so we got tank A. So let's look at it. It's, I noticed it didn't start from zero. And they said something about a proportional relationship. And we remember from our other question, proportional relationships start from zero. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is an initial value. So this tank has already an initial value of about 600 or 650, 625 gallons of water in it already. So, but as you go on, it keeps filling up over a two minute time period. So, but uh, I know proportional relationships start with zero, so I know a is not a proportional relationship.
so it has an initial value. So this is tank A, which is already filled with a lot of water in it. Now, if I look at tank B, I notice it's starting from zero, so it's empty. So there's no water in it. As a half a minute elapsed, you have close to 200 gallons in it. As one minute elapsed, you have like, looks like about 300. One and a half minutes, a little over 400. And two minutes is the one I'm going to use because that one happens to land right on the line where I need. So this one lands right here on this point where my I can find my constants of proportionality, which is known as my unit rate, which will be 600, as we did before. 600 over 2. And that, if you remember, that's your y value over your x value. That'll equal your constants of proportionality unit rate. When we reduce that, that gives us a total of 300 gallons of water every one minute. So, so in one minute, this would be three gallons. This would be the unit rate. I think it said to find the unit rate. So there's your constant of proportionality, which is also another way of describing the unit rate. So which one was... Uh, uh, proportional relationship only tank B because it has a unit rate and uh, it starts from the origin. If we looked at this one, we can use this point right here because it meets at 1000 over 1 1.5 and we can divide that to find out what that's equal to to find out what its rate is and there it is, I have it. 1,000 over 1 1.5, 666 and two-thirds gallons per minute would be the unit rate that it would be filling up. But remember, it's already filled with some water, and it needs to start from the origin in order to be proportional. So it does not start from the origin. It's not a proportional relationship. It has an initial value. We also mentioned about tank D. We said it is a proportional relationship, tank D has no initial value so it does in other words it starts from zero which all proportional relationships do there are zero gallons in the tank it does start from the origin and it is a proportional relationship so and we found out the unit rate so tank b was our answer another good question so i hope you understand what's going on if you're not sure rewatch the video write down your questions bring them in and if you're in trouble call the the homework, teacher homework helpline at 212-777-3380. We have qualified teachers who will help you out with your work. That's Monday through Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays from 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision Channel 15. Watch Dr. Rob's study videos on YouTube. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Take a look at our newest release, PKMS Math Prep 17. Tweet me at DRobMath1. Good luck on your exam. I hope you do well. If these videos have been helping you, give me a thumbs up. Write me a little note. Let me know how I'm doing for you guys. So that way I'll continue to make more study videos in the future. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good luck. Bye-bye.